I will never forget the first day I received First Holy Communion. The first day I received Holy Communion, I almost didn't talk to anybody for the rest of that day. It, it was such a sacred and solemn moment for me that I felt talking to someone else might defile the sanctity of the day. So I almost didn't open my mouth to say a word to anybody because I had just received Jesus. It is a special day. There are those days we do not forget in our lives. Those very special days we never forget in our lives because they really define the persons we are today. So we thank God for the, the gifts of the Eucharist. Today is Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. You know, the church teaches that the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian faith. So the church, the whole of the church's activities, our liturgy, they all revolve around the Eucharist. All the sacraments, all the other sacraments, they flow into the Eucharist and they flow out of the Eucharist because it is the source and summit of, of our Christian faith. The sacrament is defined as the outward sign of inward grace, and, and that implies that you know, the, the sacrament provides the, the means through which we are able to touch the sacred, the divine. You know, God in his graciousness has allowed material substances to become the means through which we can touch the divine, the sacred. We have water, we have wine, we have bread, we have salt, we have oil, and we could use those material substances to transcend and to touch the, the sacred, and the sacred can, can also touch us. Today, in this beautiful celebration, we see the embodiment of the divine in the Eucharist because you know, Jesus Christ is truly really substantially present in the Holy Eucharist. So it is the presence of, of God in, in our midst. And that is why we celebrate the Eucharist every day. It, it is the perpetual presence of God in our, our midst. He says that I will be with you always until the end of time. I will not leave you as orphans. It is in him will live and move and have our being. So he is always with us, and the Eucharist demonstrates that perpetual presence of God in, in, our, in, in our midst. And so, my dear friends, we have to really appreciate the fact that you know, whenever we celebrate the Mass, we make present the presence of Christ. Whenever we celebrate the Mass, we make present the sacrifice of Calvary, we, we make present in an unbloody manner the bloody sacrifice of the cross. That is what happens when we celebrate the Mass. We make present the presence of God because he will always be with us until the end of time. Now, do we, do we even thank God enough for what he has done for us? Do we really appreciate God enough for who he is and what? He has, he has done for us. You know, God, in his goodness, reveals himself to us in various ways and forms. So God reveals himself to us through scripture. The, you know, the, the entrance of that word gives light and understanding to the simple. God reveals himself through nature so we can contemplate the beauty of God and the beauty of, of nature. God is so gracious. He reveals himself to us even through worship because God dwells in the worship and the praises of his people. God is so gracious because he is present where two or three are gathered. God is gracious. He reveals himself to us at the breaking of bread in the sacraments. Do we even thank God enough for who he is and what he has done for us? And even when we thank God, our thanksgiving is, can never be enough. I mean, we cannot thank God enough for what he has done for us. Do you know why? Because even our thanksgiving adds nothing to his greatness. God is all sufficient. God is all knowing. Our thanksgiving adds nothing to 
his greatness. And when we talk about the Eucharist as thanksgiving, it is not just our thanksgiving. It is also the thanksgiving of the Son to the Father. So whatever we do here at Mass, it is, we are not doing it by ourselves alone. We, it is Christ who is celebrating this Eucharist. It is Christ who is also singing through us and with us. Through him, with him, and in him. We'll never forget that. But whatever we do, we are not alone here. We are doing all of these in Christ, through Christ, and with Christ. So this Thanksgiving Eucharist is also the Thanksgiving of the Son to the Father. Now, this is why it becomes the perfect Thanksgiving. This is why it is the perfect covenant. It is so amazing, my dear friends, that when we reflect on the readings of today, they all make reference to the blood of the covenant. Now, I mean, how do we talk about the blood of the covenant if we do not talk about the blood of the Lamb? Now, I mean, how do we talk about the blood of the Lamb if we do not even talk about the blood of the animals in the old dispensation? Now, how do we even talk about the blood of the animals in the old dispensation if we do not even talk about the covenant relationship God had with his people? Now, we have to look at the covenant God had with Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. What was the sign of that covenant? Circumcision. That was a sign of the covenant God had with Abraham. We look at the covenant God had with Moses. What was the sign of the covenant? The tablets of stone, the Ten Commandments. Now, the covenant God had with Moses was ratified by the blood of animals. So today in the first reading, we heard that Moses used the blood of these animals. What did he do? He, you know, part of the blood he sprinkled in over the altar, and part of the blood he sprinkled over the people. The altar representing God and the people. So the covenant is always between God and, and his people. And after Moses has sprinkled the blood, and we have to know why he sprinkled the blood of the animals over the people. So you could imagine, you know, such... <laughs> Such an experience, the blood of animals over the people. But why did he do that? It was a sign of cleansing, a sign of sanctification. And after he has sprinkled the blood of animals over the people, what did the people say? All that you have said, we will do. That's what it said. So they made a promise to God. So the covenant is about promise. That God makes his promise, we also make our promise. The people said, all that you have said, we will do. This is typical of us human beings. <laughs> you know, we, we make promises, but how many of us keep to our promises? How many of us are faithful to the promises we've made, we've made to God? You know, I always remember the New Year resolution. Like, we have New Year resolutions, and, and even before the 5th of January, we must have broken all the resolutions we made on the New Year's Eve. So we, we make promises to God, but do we keep to those promises? Now the question is, why was the old covenant imperfect? The old covenant was imperfect, not just because they used the blood of animals, but it was also because the people were unfaithful to their promise to God. Now we come to the new covenant, and we see the perfect covenant. Why is the new covenant a perfect covenant? It is because you know, Christ took the place of the animals. He has become the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. What is the lamb that was slain? Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So Christ is our Passover lamb. The old lamb in the old dispensation was to celebrate the Passover of the Israelites from Egypt to the promised land. But in this new Passover, Christ our Passover lamb, we celebrate our Passover from time to eternity, from sin to grace, from darkness to light, from death to life. This is the new Passover that Christ represents. He is our Passover lamb. Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Christ, my dear friends, represents the perfect covenant because in Christ we see the sacrificer and the sacrifice. In Christ we see the altar and the lamb. In Christ we see the victim and the priest. In Christ 
we see the place and the time of the sacrifice. And that is why it is called the hour of mercy, divine mercy. We'll find this in, in the sacrifice of Christ on the cross of, of Calvary. So we have, my dear friends, this perfect covenant as against the old covenant in the old dispensation. And this is why it is the perfect covenant, because Christ, you know, took our place. The reason why he came, he became flesh. He dwelt amongst us. Why did he become a human person? It is to take our place and to stand before the Father and to say, here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Now you can see that he obeyed the will of his Father, and that was what led him to his death. Recalling the old dispensation, the people said, all that you have said we will do. That was their response. When Moses sprinkled the blood of animals over them, all that you have said we will do. But they didn't do all that God said. But now we have in Jesus Christ this perfect obedience to the will of the Father. Here I am, Lord, I have come to do your will. And he obeyed the will of his Father, and that led him to the cross. This is why it is the perfect covenant, because he stands in our place. He represents you and I in this new covenant relationship. So when Jesus Christ, you know, when God looks at us, do you know what he sees? He does not only see us, but he sees the image of Christ in each and every one of us. That is what happens in our relationship with God today. When he looks at you, he does not only see you, but he sees the image of Christ in you. This is the redemption we celebrate. This is our salvation. This is why we have a new and a perfect covenant in Christ Jesus. He took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples. These are wonderful acts of divine providence. He took bread. That reveals Christ to be our priest. He said the blessing. That reveals Christ to be the head of the family. Because in the Jewish tradition, the head of the family would say the blessing over the meal. Now he broke it. That reveals Christ to be our victim. And he gave it to his disciples. That reveals Christ to be our provider. So in this act of consecration, in the words of the institution, he took bread, he said the blessing, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples. We see Christ as our priest. We see Christ as the head of the family. We see Christ as the victim. And we see Christ as our provider. So when we come for Mass, my dear friends, whenever, whenever we come for Mass, we are coming to Christ, our priest. Well, whenever we come for Mass, we come to Christ, the Good Shepherd, the head of the family. When we come to Mass with your friends, we come to our victim. When we come for Mass, we come to our provider. What are we to take home today, my dear friends? What do we learn? What do we learn from Christ, the priest? We learn how to sacrifice. That is what the priest does. That is what the priest represents. It represents sacrifice. So when we come for Mass, we come to learn from Christ, the eternal priest, on how to sacrifice. When we come for Mass, we come to learn from the Good Shepherd on how to be good shepherds ourselves and how to be sources of blessings to those who come our way. When we come for Mass, we come to learn from Christ, the victim, on how, my dear friends, to empty ourselves of ourselves, to break ourselves of every pride and arrogance that we we may make ourselves available for others. When we come for Mass, we come to our eternal provider. He provides all our needs. And the Eucharist is a symbol of that providence. Give us this day our daily bread. It is because he gives us his body to eat. So we can say in confidence, give us this day our daily bread. It is a symbol of his divine providence for you and I. We come to learn from the eternal provider. To learn how to give. Because it is in giving even generously that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to life.